If we recall back from one of the previous lectures, we had talked about Dalton's atomic theory, and one of his postulates was that each uh, atom of the same element had the same mass, they were identical, and we said that was false, and that's because we have what's called isotopes. Um, so isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons. Okay, same number of protons, meaning they are the same element. Remember on the previous video we learned that the number of protons dictate which element we're looking at, same as the atomic number. Okay. So atoms with the same number of protons, but they're going to have different number of neutrons. Okay, we call those isotopes. So remember I said you could not get the number of, of neutrons from the periodic table. And the reason for that is because we have isotopes. This is something that uh, Dalton did not understand. First of all, he didn't even feel that protons, neutrons, and electrons existed. Uh, so, you know, how could he anticipate this? Um, but but this, this is how we get different atoms of the same element. Okay. Now the only thing that we can change right now is the number of neutrons. If we change the number of protons, we change the element and that is not an isotope. Okay. An isotope of, is of the same element. Uh, and right now we're still keeping the number of electrons uh, the same as the number of protons. Okay. So what happens then is when we change the number of neutrons, and we have this different number of neutrons, this is going to have elements or atoms of different masses. Okay, so same element, different masses. <clears throat> All right, so how we represent isotopes when we're dealing with them on an individual basis is we have a, a particular symbol that we use. So the generic symbol, we have capital E, and this is just the chemical symbol. So it's two two letter symbol. Okay. Then we have to the left of that symbol, up as a superscript, we have A, that's our mass number. And then Z down below, this is our atomic number or the number of protons. So if we look at two isotopes of carbon, okay, <clears throat> two very uh, used, famous isotopes of carbon, we have carbon-12 and we have carbon-14. Okay. So when we read this, we say carbon-12. If we were to write out the name of our isotope here, we'd have the name of the element, put a dash, and then we have the mass number. So we'd have carbon-12 or carbon-14. So two different ways to go about it. And these are two different isotopes of carbon. Carbon-14 is very uh, used isotope of carbon because it's used in carbon dating, okay? Understanding how old things are, artifacts, things that are, you know, discovered and whatnot. Um, you'll notice that when I wrote these symbols, I actually left off the atomic number. Okay? Uh, most of the time, the atomic number is left off. Sometimes it, it can be included, and that's fine. Uh, the reason why a lot of times we leave it off is because if we know the chemical symbol, we know the atomic number. If we know the atomic number, we know the chemical symbol. So these are two pieces of kind of the same information. Okay, so sometimes, a lot of times that uh, atomic number is just left off. 
So what does this have to do with atomic mass then? Okay, if we have these isotopes, they're the same element, but they're different numbers of neutrons, which means we're gonna have a different mass for each element, for each atom that we're looking at. Okay. So when we look at um, the mass of an atom or the mass of an element, basically we look at the weighted average mass of all of the isotopes of that element that are known. Okay, so elements have uh, naturally occurring isotopes and those isotopes have a certain amount of abundance to them. So we have to take into account if one isotope is found more in nature than another. Okay. So if we look at mercury here, there's a number of different uh, isotopes of mercury. And this is their percent abundance. Okay, so percent abundance. Percent found, same kind of thing. So one question that I could ask you just looking at this table is I would say, well, what is the principal isotope? Okay. Looking at these values here, what do you think the principal isotope is? Okay. And yes, I know you haven't looked this up in your book. I know that uh, this is not a vocab that was not on your sheet. It's just a, a question. Use use your, your brain. What would you guess you had to take a stab? Your life was on the line. You had to give an answer. What would you say the principal isotope would be? I'm going to guess that most of you picked this isotope here. We said mercury 202. Okay, or remember we could say mercury 202. That's the isotope that we're looking at. Okay. And you would be correct. Okay. Now the reason why I'm guessing is you probably went, well, that has the highest abundance. That's the definition of a principal isotope. We are basically looking at the isotope with the highest percent abundance. And that is our principal isotope. <clears throat> Let's keep talking about our isotopes. So let's look at bromine. Okay. Bromine has two, just two naturally occurring isotopes. We have bromine 79 and bromine 81. Okay. And their abundance here is uh, roughly 50 50. Okay. Maybe we call it 41, 51 49. Okay. That's okay. So if we were to say, ask, or if I were to ask, you know, what, what's the average mass here, okay, average atomic mass, we would look at this and say, well, the average atomic mass should be roughly in between bromine 79 and bromine 81. Okay, remember that our mass numbers are roughly the mass of our atom, because they're in the number of protons and number of neutrons. So we're going to guess that, that that mass, that average mass, should be somewhere roughly in between 79 and 81. So it should be about 80. Okay. So average atomic mass is probably about 80. Okay. And because bromine 79 has just a slightly higher percentage, I'm going to say it's just closer to 79. Okay. Not by much, just ever so slightly. If we want to look at, or if you take a look at your periodic table for bromine, bromine has an atomic number of 35. The number below our symbol, that non-whole number, looks something like this. That non-whole number that's below, okay, this is what we call the average atomic mass. 
And that takes into account all of the uh, naturally occurring isotopes, in this case just two, and their percent abundance. Okay, and we list that there. Because when we work with elements, when we work with compounds, um, we're not going to have a just one isotope that we're working with. We're going to work with basically all of them. We need an average of them. Okay, uh, this average atomic mass the units of it are very important to us, and they are AMU, and those are called atomic mass units. Now there are technical definitions of what uh, this AMU is. It has to do with carbon. Um, we're not going to worry about that. Basically, this atomic mass unit is roughly equivalent to the mass of a proton. So by counting up our number of protons, we know our mass. So this number here, this is AMU. So we have 79.90 AMU. Right? When we looked at our average atomic mass here, we said it was about 80. To be more correct, we'd call that 80 AMU. So one of the things we want to practice then is we want to practice calculating our average atomic masses. Okay? Now keep in mind, remember that we always were wanting to take into account our percent abundance. So what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be calculating is called a weighted average. Okay? It has to take into account the percents here. Okay. Uh, if we just took the straight up average, adding two numbers up, dividing it by two, um, that's not taking into account the fact that you're going to find one more prevalent than the other. Um, so if we have look at copper, we have two isotopes of copper, and we want to ca calculate the atomic mass of copper. Um, now we have, uh, we're given the masses of each of those <clears throat> isotopes there, and we have our percent abundance. Okay. Now let's just look at these numbers roughly. Where, Which value, the 63 or the 65, do we think our average is going to be closer to? Hopefully you said the uh, copper 63. It has a higher abundance, so we should see the average be closer to 63 than it is to 65. So it's not going to be smack dab in the middle. It's going to be closer to 63. Okay. So to do this calculation, <clears throat> get our average atomic mass. We want our AMU. Okay. We're going to take the mass of our first isotope, our 63.01. AMU, and we are going to multiply that by its percent abundance, uh, but anytime we work with a percent, we want it in its decimal form. So we're going to take our 69 percent, okay, per cent, that's per centi. Remember, a centi is a hundred, so we have 69 divided by 100. Then we're going to add that to the same calculation with our other isotope. So we have 65.01 AMU. <clears throat> Multiply it by its percent. And we're going to put that in decimal form. So if we grab our calculator, Let's put that there so we can see what's going on. We have 63.01 and a times by 69 divided by 100. Parentheses aren't really needed, but just showing it so it's consistent with how I've written it down. We are going to add that to uh, 65.01 times 31 divided by 100. So our calculator gives us 63.63. So 63.63. Our units are AMU. 
Okay, we don't want any naked numbers. We always want to include units. Uh, if you don't include units, then I just assume you mean fluffy bunnies, and the answer is definitely not 63.63 .63 fluffy bunnies. So we have 63.63 .63 atomic mass units, our AMUs. Okay. The great thing about calculating your average atomic masses and you, is you can always check your answers. In other words, you can always use the periodic table. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we look up the average atomic mass of copper, take a peek at a periodic table, we'll see that it has 63.55 AMU. Okay. That's not pretty much the same. Okay. No, not exactly, but we can call it good. They're roughly the same. Uh, your average atomic masses may not always come out the same um, when this calculation done is for for, is done for the periodic table, excuse me, uh, you're going to use much more accurate um, percents here. You're going to have decimals and whatnot and, and many more sig figs. So as long as you're close, call it good.